We are going to talk about it. We have so much to talk about when it comes to Michael Jordan, and I want to jump right into it. Skip, good choice on your shirt today. Last night, we finally had the opportunity to watch the first two episodes of Michael Jordan's documentary, The Last Dance. We learned so much along the way. I honestly couldn't look away, but one of the big takeaways was we learned that even if the Bulls were to go 82-0 and in the 1997-98 season, Jerry Krause was not not going to bring Phil Jackson back as head coach either way. So Shannon, let's get right to it. What was your biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway, Skip, was the hatred, the vitriol that Michael Jordan and so many of his teammates had towards Jerry Krause. Um, And the open and blatant disrespect that they showed this man. Skip, you know, I, I was watching it last night as everybody, I'm sure 20, 25 million other people was watching Skip. And Michael, like, asked the man, did he have diet pills in his pockets? And asked, are you going to be in the layup line? They're going to have to lower the rim. And it was reported that Scottie Pippen was hurling, like, it was it was more than yada yada. It was, like, open and blatant and the harshness and the curse words that they hurled toward this man. But, Skip, Jerry Krause bears a lot of responsibility for ultimately breaking this team up. But the ultimate responsibility goes to Jerry Reinsdorf because just like he got on a plane and took his butt to Montana to sign Phil Jackson to a one-year deal, if he ultimately, if he wanted to keep this team together, he could have. So although Jerry Krause gets blame, deserves some of the blame, Jerry Reinsdorf could have kept this team together. It reminds you of something that happened five, six years earlier, Skip, with Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones because if Jerry wanted to keep it together, he could have. If Jerry Reinsdorf, Skip, he oh, he was the majority owner of the team. Yes, he bestowed a lot of power on Jerry Krause. Yes, he let him trade players and trade up in the draft and release players. He let him do all that. But you know one thing, Skip Bayless, having been around this game for a long period of time, when you're dealing with those high level of players and you're moving up and down in the draft, you run everything by the, the owner. And he ran that by the owner. And trying to trade Scottie Pippen, they entertained that. But I think they thought that, you know, if we go this far, Jordan might walk uh, a season earlier. Now, he later walked after the season, Skip. But another thing, Skip, I'm watching. And I know, look, look like I said, I met Michael Jordan and, and, and the aura around him. He's as close to a godlike figure that I've ever seen with my own two eyes. But, Skip, the aura around him. And the way people reacted when he came into a building or he walked past them down the street. Skip, I can honestly say this. Just like there'll never be another Tiger Woods. There'll never be another Muhammad Ali. Now, they might be guys that win more golf titles than Tiger Woods. They might be a guy that wins more heavyweight and become undisputed heavyweight champion more times than Muhammad Ali. But nobody will ever have that kind of cachet. Skip, nothing. Nothing like this. There'll never be another team. Because if you think about it, Skip, there have been teams that had the top two stars were bigger than, 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 you know, Scotty was the second star. But if you look at Shaq Kobe and you look at Durant and you look at, say, uh, uh, Steph Curry and what they possess, but they didn't care like this is, Skip. I mean, look, the Eagles are unbelievable, but they're not the Rolling Stones. And Skip, and that's no disrespect to Eagles fans out there, but it's just different. They were different. And they did this, Skip, 15, 20 years before social media. So can you imagine maybe the scrutiny would have gotten to him and maybe we'd have learned some things we didn't need to know. But Skip, I've never seen anything like this here. I thought I understood the the aura around Michael Jordan, Skip, because when I met him and uh, he had just, as a matter of fact, I don't even think he had announced his retirement, maybe he had, at the Super Bowl during uh, uh, in January or February of 94. He was the first person I actually saw with bodyguards. You know, Skip, you see the movies and you see somebody with bodyguards and you see these gangsters and they got bodyguards. But an actual person with my own eyes, he was the first person I ever saw with that because I was only around football players. So football players didn't have bodyguards at the time. But, Skip, this was unbelievable. And to see what drove him and how it just like, and he said something, Skip, he like, and and, uh, I was reading where he said, if I find somebody would have got a weakness, I take advantage of it and I take advantage of it again. And again, and again, and again, he says, I don't let up. Zach Levine, that's what he said. He said, I found Allie Quigley couldn't jump in the air and put the ball between her legs and lay it off the backboard. So, Skip, there goes your theory. You find somebody that has a weakness, 
you run it into the ground until you get the satisfaction and the results that you require, which is to win. And he wanted to win at all costs. Wow. Be finished? You know, it's I'm funny done. to me that for a man <laughs> who constantly wears a goat mask to try to convince <laughs> people out there that LeBron James is even remotely even in the same conversation with Michael Jeffrey Jordan for that kind of man, you, you just went on for 12 minutes. I, I think the show is close <laughs> to over now, rhapsodizing about Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And I, I love it. I could sit and listen to you all day because everything you said is right on point for the first time in a long time. We're going to get to LeBron <laughs> versus Michael in a few minutes. So I'm going to stay right here on the guy that I have endorsed as the one and only number 23, the original and only 23, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. It's funny that you bring up the fact that Jerry versus Jimmy fell apart fairly quickly in Dallas because... I left Jerry versus Jimmy. I wrote three books on the Cowboys, and the last two dealt with Jerry versus Jimmy. And I went straight from those three books to becoming the lead columnist at the Chicago Tribune, right on schedule, 1997-1998. And I was there for the last dance. I got to see it from the inside out. So for me, watching the documentary last night, nothing shocked me, nothing even surprised me. The upshot of it was, I was just happy that the world got to see what scoundrels Jerry Krause and, as you point out, Jerry Reinsdorf were in 97, 98, because they broke up the, the best defensive team I ever saw, and, and I think the greatest overall team I ever saw, because Jordan was at his peak. And he did have some help from Scottie Pippen and some help from Dennis Rodman and some help from Phil Jackson, a great head coach, obviously. But that team revolved around the sun and the moon. It was both sun and moon were Michael Jordan. <laughs> and the point was that right away... I, I had a long sit-down interview with Jerry Krause, and I got to see inside this little man. And to remind people, as we talked about on Friday, this little man, as Reinsdorf, the owner, admitted last night, started out as, wait a second, a, a baseball scout for Reinsdorf's White Sox? That was his start as a personnel man. And if you can explain to me why Jerry Reinsdorf took a liking <laughs> to this little man with a huge ego, you're beyond me. Because Jerry Reinsdorf admitted in a recent interview during the documentary last night that he was told by people in his organization, don't touch Krause. He tends to alienate people. So what did Jerry Reinsdorf do? He made him... The owner, I'm sorry, the, the general manager and the operator, I was going to say, of Michael Jordan's Bulls. He did not draft Michael Jordan. As we saw last night, Rod Thorne drafted him, Thorne. and he fell into Rod Thorne's lap, obviously, as the third overall pick. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But the point was that Jerry Krause got lifted by Michael Jordan into the national spotlight. And I was just glad that people nationally could see what a mess Jerry Krause made of that organization. He did draft Scottie Pippen, but Scottie Pippen was on everybody's radar coming out of central Arkansas. And Jerry Krause's ego got so big that he began to clash, obviously, with Phil Jackson, who actually did what Jimmy often did, Jimmy Johnson did, to Jerry Jones, which was say, who are you? You haven't earned the right to be part of this. Well, I always defended Jerry because at least Jerry played college football. He's a starter at Arkansas with Jimmy on a national championship team in 1964. Jerry Krause says he played high school baseball at Taft High School in Chicago. I, I have a hard time even believing that, said he was a catcher. I, I don't know about that, but I do know he had no background in basketball to speak of until Jerry Reinsdorf made him... The, the sort of the, his henchman running the Bulls. 
he was the bad cop and he did Jerry Reinsdorf's bidding. And Shannon, to your point, the, the shocking quote to me last night was from Jerry Reinsdorf in a recent interview. That This, uh, this interview wasn't 1998. It was done recently for the documentary. And he said that he and Jerry Krause decided going into 97, 98, that except for Michael, all the other players were nearing the ends of their careers. What? I was there. <laughs> Scotty Pippen went on and played six more years. I can go right down the list. Everybody went on to play somewhere else. They were not nearing the end of their careers. We're going to debate this later in the show. I believe they would have won two more championships. It was just the egos of Reinsdorf and Krauss. They couldn't stand it that Jordan mm -hmm. had taken over the whole city, not to mention the whole NBA basketball world. They were jealous. They were resentful. But in this case, if we can compare it to Belichick versus Tom Brady, we had a Robert Kraft in the middle who kept taking Brady's side. I think he was taking Brady's side to the end. In this case... The owner was taking Jerry Krause's side and saying, go, Jerry, go, against Phil, against Michael. And to Michael's undying credit, he had pledged allegiance to Phil, and he stuck by his guns. That's what you're going to see in this documentary. Michael's pride was so supreme. His principles were so high that once he pledged allegiance, he just said, you, you send that man out the back door. I'm walking out the back door behind him. Kraus had fallen mm -hmm. in love with, with Tim Floyd. I know Tim very well. He's a good guy, and he was on a, a nice arc as a young college basketball coach. But, but why he would think I could replace Phil Jackson with Tim Floyd out of Iowa State was beyond comprehension to me. So I'm glad that everybody got to see that the real villain here actually exposed himself last night. It's Jerry Reinsdorf. He's the one who said, we yes. decided they were all nearing the ends of their careers. What are you doing? What are you talking about? <laughs> that was outrageous that I, I wanted to hear Jerry Reinsdorf apologize last night and say, you know what? I've come to my senses. I see what we broke up. And he was still adamant. No, no, we did the right thing. You did the right thing. You, you basically ended basketball in Chicago as you knew it. Michael brought basketball yep. to a city that had never had great pro basketball. And then Jerry, the two Jerry's, ended it. Your thoughts, Shannon Sharp? Skip, you're, you're absolutely right. And I've never seen anything like this where a general manager and the owner is upset, aggravated, that it seems like the turnaround was because of Michael Jordan. And Jerry Reinsdorf, he owned the team. Jerry Krause, he ran the team for Jerry Reinsdorf. Skip, they became bitter. They became bitter because they weren't getting the credit. Mr. Kraft, Skip, can you imagine Mr. Kraft breaking this thing up early? Now, it, 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 and some people still believe that they could have gone on and maybe won another one or two more with the Patriots. But for 20 years, they let this thing stick together for 20 years. Jerry, Jerry Reinsdorf, they, they broke it up prematurely. Skip, look, I don't know, it's, it, it, it's, I don't want to be, you know, hypocritical here and say, yeah, they would have or they wouldn't have, but I will say this. I believe, as Michael said, we've earned the right to defend what we've won, and if somebody beats us, so be it, we will gladly move along, but you don't break it up because of what? Skip, it. and early on, I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to a, a lot of these after after the show, and they're listening to that. Uh, I think her name Jane McManus. Skip wrote. For, she writes for the. She's in Boston, and she was explaining how like Michael was Jackie so McMullen. open early yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Jackie Jackie McMullen. That's her name. Skip. Yeah, thank you. And Skip, it was like listening at her talk. How Michael despised Jerry Kraft. Jerry Kraft. Jerry Krause. And Skip. Even as he despised him at his lowest, it, it, I mean, it, from his from the depth of his soul, he went out there and gave it everything. He got upset at Scotty. Yes, yeah, Scotty, I dislike him too. But you being selfish, you own you own the team. Look, I don't like him either. As a matter of fact, I don't really like Jerry Reinsdorf either. But we got to win this thing, and. And Jay Adonde, listen to Jay Adonde saying that Scotty was a little envious that Michael was getting, and Skip, that's natural. That's, 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 a, that's a natural uh, human reaction. 
Hold on. I, I'm, oh, oh, did y'all forget about me? Hey, I'm six foot seven, can guard four or five different positions. Uh, look, I can't score like he can, but I can defend. I lead in assists. I lead in steals. You know what I do. And all y'all talking about is Mike, Mike, Mike. What about Scotty? And I think Jordan paid Scotty Pippen the ultimate compliment. There has never been another compliment that he could receive that's greater than what Michael gave him last night. Not top 50 player, not one of the all-time greats, none of that, Skip. He said, you cannot say Michael Jordan without saying Scotty Pippen. That is the greatest, Mark. Not being 50, not one of the 50 greatest, not the sixth championship. Skip, when that man spoke that out of his mouth, Scotty Pippen should have said, you know what? Nothing else matters. You can say I was robbing. You can say whatever you want to say. But that man just blessed me. That man knows what I meant to him and what is success. And he said it. There's no Michael without Scotty. But Skip, I still can't believe it. I, Skip, look, I've known players. I've played with players that didn't like the coach. I've played with players that didn't like the general manager. Skip, the blatant disrespect. Skip, now we might say something behind the guy's back. Skip, they're talking like this like the man's not even there and he's standing right next to him. You, and I'm like, man, and I think, I, I think this is kind of what Jordan was alluding to, Skip, is going to make him look like a, a, a bad guy because it seemed like real petty that you're Michael Jordan. <laughs> you're the greatest player. You got the aura of invincibility around you. You're the Pied Piper. Skip, did you remember when they went, I think it was in France, it's, uh, I think it was in France, so they were overseas. And on the headline of the paper, Michael Jordan is bigger than the Pope. Skip, do you understand what that means? Bigger than the Pope? Man, there, there, there's nothing going to be like this, Skip. I want to see it. So, so the reason I didn't think Michael came off badly last night, that he did not come across as he feared as a horrible person, is because the world got to see what a scoundrel, what a villain Jerry <laughs> Krause truly was. And after my first right. long sit down with Jerry Krause, I wrote a piece for the Chicago Tribune in which I compared Jerry Krause to the penguin in the Batman movie, if you remember the 1992 <laughs> Batman I Returns. Do. Remember the Danny DeVito, Danny DeVito penguin that he played? In, yes, and that was in yeah. the Tim Burton Batman starring Michael Keaton as Batman. Right. That guy, that guy, that Danny DeVito penguin character, that was Jerry Krause. And it didn't bother uh -huh. me a bit that Jordan constantly shamed him. And again, there was the he line did. about, what are those pills? Are those short <laughs> pills or diet pills? And I told you the story about being at a, a pro-am golf tournament in which Jordan asked me to come inside the ropes. And I walked a couple of holes with him. And I told you that he hit his drive on a par five into a fairway bunker, told his caddy he wanted his three wood. And I said, man, that's a tough shot out of the sand to try to get that three wood up over the lip and all the way toward the green. And he said, no, it's not a tough shot. I just imagine that the golf ball is Jerry Krause's face. And to me, that's when it hit home the level of bitterness he had. And it was legit bitterness. It, Jerry Krause mm -hmm. earned the bitterness. So uh, again, back to your Pippen point, I want to address that because Jerry did pick Scottie Pippen. And then I thought it was well done in the documentary. Pippen then quickly agreed to a deal that was insanely wrong. It was just a bad deal, so, so bad that even Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner, said, uh, I would recommend you not take that deal. But Scotty wanted all that upfront money so that, that he could be, f feel secure for him and his family back in Arkansas. He, he wanted mm -hmm. security. He wanted something he could trust going forward. And obviously that deal within, as you always talk about in the NFL, about Six months passed and it was rendered obsolete. <laughs> so again, Scotty had building bitterness because he had made a mistake on his contract, but he was Correct. just as brutal on, you know, ju just as he ridiculed Jerry Krause just as profanely, if, if not more so than Michael Jordan did. And Michael would even go so far as to say, hey, we're about to go out and shoot layups. You want to come get in the layup line with us? We'll, we'll bring the goal down to your size because they couldn't stand the fact that this little penguin figure was, was going to break up the bulls and send Phil Jackson out the door. And it's, it's truly, it, to me, it's the saddest on-court story 
in basketball history. But, but Shannon, I got to tell you, as much respect as I have for Scottie Pippen and his ability, Michael did teach him how to handle himself. He taught him how to win. Mm -hmm. And I do not think Scotty was remotely as tough-minded as Michael was. And if you look what happened to Scotty, he was still in the prime of his career when the Bulls broke up. Remember, he went to Houston. He averaged 15 mm -hmm. and 7 at Houston. Then he went to Portland with the Trailblazers and averaged 13, 11, 11, and 11. So, so again, he wasn't that guy. He he, he didn't right. make Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan made Scotty. And I've always told you, there is no way to me that Scotty Pippen would have been a top 50 player if not for Jordan. He was very good, but he was not the second best player in the league like they were doing. And again, I admired no, Michael for giving no. him his due because he did do a lot of things for Michael. No, he, Scotty was not even close to being the second best player in the league. Not when Magic was still in this league, Larry Bird, Hakeem Olajuwon, there were Charles Barkley, Carl Malone. They were all better players, all around players than Scotty Pippen. Now, Scotty Pippen, look, Skip, he could defend like nobody's business. Now, we might not see a guy that could on the wing. People give Kawhi <clears throat> credit, and rightfully so. But Skip, Scotty Pippen was so long and could slide so gracefully. It was like he was on air. Going side to side, 94 feet. Now, they don't pick up like that. Everybody tell me, oh, they pick up. Pat Bell picks up like that. But they're not ask asking Pat Bell to do what he did on, on the offensive end. But, Skip, the thing that I saw, what I found most interesting, Jerry Krause was the kid, Skip. It was always the kid that really couldn't play that had the nicest basketball. And if you picked him, you could play with this ball as long as he got a run. But the moment he didn't get a run, what did he do? He took his ball home. Because they would never embrace Jerry Krause, Jerry Krause said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to break it up. You don't want to include me? Let me show you what I'm going to do. And he did it. And Jerry Reinsdorf needs to get more blame, Skip. And they put all this on Jerry Krause. Rightfully so, Skip, because he's the general manager. But Jerry Reinsdorf could have prevented this. He got on a plane and went to Montana and gave Phil Jackson $6 million for one year. But he couldn't say, Jerry, I'm going to disagree with you on this one. We're going to run this thing back. And if they get beat, we can break it up. But we're not going to break it up prematurely. He didn't do that, and he needs to bear more culpability in the breakup of the Bulls also. And one last quick point before we go to Jenny and go to break. The other thing that struck me last night was I, I hadn't focused on the fact that Michael Jordan's high school coaches – cut him in his sophomore season. Uh, Shannon, I still can't get it through my head. That's got to be on them. <laughs> Surely he had that much. This is a sophomore. You know, a sophomore, you're going on 16 years of age. I, how, how could you cut that guy from that team? I have no idea. Maybe they're the greatest high school team ever, but uh, I think that's on those high school coaches. Skip, they said, though, he was only 5'10", and when he came back for his junior year, he was 6'3". So it might have had a lot to do with height as opposed to skill set. So imagine a 5'10 skill set with a 6'3 skill set. So now he was a guard at 6'3", and he showed you, what, but it drove him. That was the beginning of the driving, Skip. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.